Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing really well. So today I am going to be sharing with you some products that I am absolutely obsessed with, can't get enough of them and I just I need to talk to you about them because you need to know about them. I'm going to be talking about some makeup, skincare, fragrance and some books as well. So let's just get straight into this. I've got a little hair care product in here as well but I'm going to start off with makeup so i'm going to start off with primers actually i've got two primers which i've been loving recently and usually i am not a primer gal i just find a lot of the time like they don't really make a difference to me if i want to make my makeup last longer i use a setting spray but i've got two primers that are just insane and the first one is the vive skin nova so i went to a harrods beauty event a couple of months ago they opened in gateshead and they gave us a little goodie bag at the end and this was in my goodie bag and oh my word guys like i am so happy i got this it is insane so this is a makeup slash skincare hybrid it's got loads of skincare benefits in there as well it's got niacinamide in which helps to sort of minimize pores which is great but the reason that i love this so much is that i've got to show you this it's got the most lovely like glowy golden thing going on like you put this on your face and your skin just glows but it looks like glass skin and it just looks so healthy but naturally healthy it kind of just looks like i mean i've got loads on my hand there we go it's sunk in a bit more now but it just makes you look like you've just applied your skincare and you just look vibrant and glowing and you look like that all day it just stays on your face it looks amazing underneath makeup it looks amazing on its own as well just on no makeup days i like wearing a bit of this and honestly it makes you look like you've got all of your beauty sleep like you've been eating all your vegetables love it the other primer is the ula henriksen banana bright sun kissed face primer because i love their original banana bright face primer this one just has a little bit of um gradual tan in there that is so genius it's got the same sort of finish as the original banana bright except i don't think it's as glowy but yeah this just like naturally enhances your tan which is brilliant next product is this it is the indeed nano bronze bronzing drops i've been mixing these in with my foundation just to give me a little bit of a bronzy tint you can use these on like your body or anything really but they kind of remind me of the drunk elephant um debronzy drops but these are much more affordable absolutely love this and i literally use like half a pump mixed in with my foundation and it gives me a lovely just healthy bronzed glow love it okay the foundation that i've been using constantly at the moment and for i'd say a good like four months now since it was launched and it was sent to me i have been using this it's replaced all of my other foundations it is the nars light reflecting foundation i am a massive fan of nars base products they are amazing. I actually have quite a few NARS products in this video. I just feel like sometimes I look like I'm sponsored by NARS. I'm not. It's just their products are amazing and I love them and I use them all the time. But this is a gorgeous lightweight foundation but it gives you sort of medium to buildable coverage. It just looks so natural on your skin but like I said, it covers any blemishes. It doesn't look cakey in any way though and it really does give you a lovely, naturally glowy finish and it's beaute. Oh my God, guys, I have a blush that I am so obsessed with. I am loving my cream products at the moment and I've been ugh, obsessed with the Nude Sticks Nudies Matte All Over Face Blush Colour in the shade Picante, you guys know I use these all the time, but I've been waiting for this shade to become available over here. I don't think it was available before, um, but this is a shade that was created by Alana Davison. Davison? Davidson. I don't know, but she is on YouTube. She's gorgeous and she's just amazing. Um, and yeah, this shade, have you seen it? I'm wearing it right now. It's not as crazy as it looks in the... Um, tube but oh, the finish of these is amazing they blend out so well and this just gives you a little bit of like and I've been out in the sun kind of look like 
Am I sunburned? Have I just applied a little bit of picante? Who knows? But I'm here for it. I absolutely love this shade. It's gorgeous. And I put it a little bit over my nose as well. Beaut, such a perfect summer colour. Onto some more makeup from NARS, their summer collection. As with all of their collections, it's just gorgeous and I'm obsessed. I love NARS eyeshadow palette and I've got their summer unrated eyeshadow palette. Firstly, this is a bit of me. I love this packaging, but like, look at these shades. Look at them guys, just take that in for a mo. Are they not just absolutely stunning? I love a good neutral palette and I love pink tones and I just find NARS's shades to be so wearable. Like even these glittery colours, they're not like super in your face glittery. You can apply them over like any of the shadows and they just give you the most gorgeous, like understated glittery look like you can wear them during the day you can mix all the colors together they all blend so amazingly together i'm wearing um a couple of the matte shades in my crease today and then i'm just wearing this all over my lid it's just a really nice neutral color i am obsessed the finish of nars eyeshadows i think might just be my favorite like they're amazing also nars have extended their color range in their cream bronzer I was sent this about a week ago and I've been using it and I've been absolutely loving it. I love a cream bronzer, but I actually have the original Laguna 2. That is my shade, um, but I love this. It's so good. It has their Minoy scent. You know their signature scent? Ugh, honestly, Nars, can you please come out with a perfume that smells like your signature Minoy scent? Next summer, I wanna see it. <laughs> Oh, it's just so good. Like, it smells like summer, but I would wear this all year round. It's got that gorgeous creamy tiara flower. Like, Minoy is tiara flower, in case you don't know, but... Beaut, the finish is amazing, more importantly. It blends out really nicely. You can build it up as well, which is nice, and I love it. Let's move on to a little bit of skincare. One of them's kind of still a makeup product, it's a bit of a hybrid, but another product from NARS. I have this Orgasm Lip Mask. This was from their summer unrated collection as well. But I just need to share this with you because I don't know if you can tell, I've literally used so much of this it is so good. I'm not sure if this is limited edition, but I would highly recommend that you pick this up. I put this on every single night before bed and my lips are so soft when I wake up. It's just such a nice product. NARS have really killed it with this. I've never actually tried NARS skincare before, um, but this is amazing. I'm very, very picky about my lip balms. I will literally only use the Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour Cream or my Nude Sticks Lip Balm. Um, do I use any more? Oh, the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Lip Oils are really good. But yeah, this is like on the same level. But obviously this is a lip mask. It has just a really nice sort of semi-glossy finish, which is really nice, but it's thick and it just makes your lips feel amazing. Another lip product, this is kind of is it makeup? Is it skincare? It's kind of skincare, but I use it as makeup. It is the Fenty Skin Cherry Treat Conditioning Lip Oil. I am wearing this today. I have worn this pretty much every day since I received this in PR. I received this about three weeks ago. It lives in my handbag. It comes everywhere with me. It is amazing. It just it looks like a gloss, but it plumps your lips. I don't know what is in here, but it really does nourish your lips. It makes them feel amazing. And this lasts for ages on your lips as well, which I really like. I love wearing a lip oil during the day when I've got makeup on, but a lot of them, the consistency is too oily and it's too thin and it kind of bleeds out into your makeup and it just doesn't look great. Whereas this stays put. It is amazing. Um, the only thing I'll say about this is um, the door foot applicator. I mean, mine's covered in lip liner, but the door foot applicator is quite large, which for some people, like if you've got a fuller pout, that's gonna be brilliant. But for me, I do find this quite big. Um, it does distribute quite a lot of product. So I do just pop a little bit onto my bottom lip do that and then I like blend it out. But 
I feel like if you had thinner lips this might be a lot but the product itself is so great. Right guys, I love an oil cleanser. When I take my makeup off, I take it off with micellar water and then I go in with an oil cleanser and I have very specific requirements. Like I've got sensitive eyes, sometimes oil cleansers can just irritate my eyes and anyway, I've been using this one by Nude Sticks and it is amazing. This is the Citrus Clean Balm and Makeup Melt and it smells like lemons and it just works really well. It removes all of my makeup but it's lightweight. I can wash it off really easily. It makes my skin feel super soft after I've used it and it makes it feel really clean and it's just a really, really great product so if you're looking for a makeup remover that is really gonna remove your makeup really well, especially eye makeup and things. Um, like if you wear heavy eye makeup, like say after a night out or something, this is great at just removing any sort of last bits of makeup. And I mean, you can go straight in with this. You don't have to use a micellar water first like I do, but I just can't be bothered with all of the mess of going straight in with an oil cleanser so I like to do this as my second sort of cleanse but it's amazing so great I have one hair product and it is the Brazilian Joya I think that's how you pronounce it conditioner from Sol de Janeiro listen this is the only hair care product that I have from Sol de Janeiro I was sent it in PR a little while ago as part of like a box and I've been using this for about three weeks now I use it with any shampoo and I just need to share it with you because you know I'm such a fan of the Sol de Janeiro scents and this smells exactly like the Boom Boom Cream. The scent lasts in your hair but the product is amazing as well. It really, really nourishes your hair. It feels so nice when you apply it. It's like very like thick and creamy but it washes out really easily and just the smell. The moment I walk into my shower, I can smell this. Like I can smell it through the bottle, it is amazing. So I'm really interested to try some of their other um, hair care products as well because this is amazing. Like imagine them all layered up. That would be great. Right, let's move on to fragrance. I am having a marshmallow moment. You will know this if you've been watching my past few videos. Like I cannot get enough of marshmallow scents at the moment and I was sent this one literally last week. It is the newest fragrance in my collection and I've worn it every single day since I received it. It is Paul and Moi de Parfum Guimauve, Guimauve de Noël 31. It basically means Christmas marshmallow, but don't be fooled by the name. You could wear this at any time of year, honestly. So basically, this is a marshmallow fragrance. It's orange blossom, it's sugar and vanilla, and it's a little bit powdery, it's sweet. It's got a gorgeous citrus opening though, which makes it amazing for summer as well. Like, oh. I love it so much. It is so delicious, but still very refined and grown up. I just absolutely adore this. And when I wear this, oh, I just smell it around myself and I'm just like in this lovely little bubble of my own loveliness <laughs> when I wear this. Honestly, it just, I love it when you're wearing a fragrance and you can just smell it around you all day and it's just so enjoyable. And that is what I get from this. It's called Guimauve de Noël Christmas Marshmallow because it is inspired by the lovely marshmallow treats that are enjoyed in France around Christmas time. God, I love it. Honestly, I'm so happy with this. Oh, it's so good, guys. On an evening when I've been getting a little bit dressed up, I have been reaching for Creed Royal Oud. This is an oud that works so well in summertime. It's got a little bit of a citrus sort of green thing going on, especially in the top. There's some lime and bergamot in the top, which lifts this fragrance and it's amazing. It's got some galbanum, which gives it that green touch, but then it's still got a lot of depth. It smells very rich and decadent. It's a little bit smoky as it dries down. There's some frankincense in there. There's cedar wood, there's ambergris. It's got a lot going on. It's very well-rounded and very well-blended as well. And I love that it's got that depth, but it's not too much or too overpowering for summertime and it's just such 
a great fragrance. I love wearing this. It's one of those when I wear it, I just feel so put together and oh, it's so good. On to books. Last week I finished reading Circe. I enjoyed this book so much, honestly guys. It is written so well. It captured my imagination massively and I'm not usually into Greek mythology or anything like that, but I don't know, I just really enjoyed this book. So the synopsis reads, in the house of Helios, god of the sun and mightiest of the titans, a daughter is born. Circe is strange, not powerful and terrible like her father, nor gorgeous and mercenary like her mother, but she has a dark power of her own, witchcraft. When Circe's gift threatens the gods, she is banished to the island of Aya? Aya? Let's just pretend that I can pronounce that. Where she owns her occult craft, casting spells, gathering strange herbs and taming wild beasts. Yet a woman who stands alone cannot live in peace for long, don't we know that? And among her island's guests is an unexpected visitor, the mortal Odysseus. Odysseus. I can't read these guys' names, I'm so sorry guys. Odysseus? For whom Circe will risk everything. This is like I said, just so beautifully written. It had me hooked. Um, there is so much content in here. The book really held my attention the whole way through. Um, Cause sometimes if a story drags on, I have a tendency to get a little bit bored and this just didn't do that at all. Um, it was just amazing, would highly recommend. It's a great summer read. And I've been meaning to read this book for ages. I bought it a while ago, but I buy loads of books and I just kind of read them as and when. But seeing as the film has now come out, I wanted to read it. It is Where the Crawdads Sing. I am only like a little bit of the way through this, but I really want to finish it and go and watch the film. Please don't leave me any spoilers in the comments. Honestly, I've been avoiding everyone who's been talking about the film. Um, I'm really enjoying this book. I absolutely love the story. It's about, um, shall I just read you the synopsis? For years, rumors of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barclay Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. But Kaya is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand. Then the time comes when she yearns to be loved. When two young men from the town become intrigued by her wild beauty, Kaya opens herself to a new life until the unthinkable happens. I haven't got to the unthinkable bit. This is really well written though. It's written by Delia Owens, who is a renowned nature writer. So the way she paints the atmosphere of the marsh and of Kaya's life and just the wildlife, everything is so vivid in my imagination as I'm reading this, which is lovely. It's such a lovely aspect. There are elements of the story. I think this is Delia Owen's first fictional novel. Um, I'm not sure, but I feel like there are parts which I would have liked to be developed more. Obviously, I haven't finished reading this, so I can't give you a full sort of review of what I think or anything, but certain parts of it so far, I would like to see them be developed more, whether they will be as the book goes on, I don't know, but just for example, Kaya experiences neglect in her early childhood and throughout her childhood actually. And it's such a big focus of the book and it's such a huge contributing factor to her entire character. So just certain things I feel, I mean, it's very easy to read even though it does touch on neglect, but I think in keeping it easy to read, certain aspects are like glossed over a little bit. Like for example, there's a bit where it touches on her reaching puberty and it's kind of just like Kaya grew boobs, a boy noticed them. And I just felt a bit like I needed more from that. I feel like if the neglect aspect wasn't such a huge part of this book, I wouldn't have minded that at all. It's the fact that it is, yet I wanted more from that. I wanted to know how Kaya deals with something like that. I feel like I've got to know Kaya in even just this short amount of the book that I've started reading and I want to know how she dealt with that. That's such a huge defining factor in our lives that, you know, 
like give me a bit more Delia give it to me I'm here for it but anyway I'm really enjoying reading this book that's just like a little niggle for me but I'm very excited to finish it I'm very excited to go and see the film as well and yeah great book if you have any book recommendations for me please let me know down below for the longest time I was not into fiction at all I was into like spiritual books and stuff like that so if you've got any um, suggestions for me please leave them down below and I hope you enjoyed this video give it a cheeky little thumbs up as always if you did and hopefully I'll catch you in my next one bye